Now that we have the iteration equations, we need to set up the boundary conditions on the sides of the rectangle of our domain. So let's start with the free stream boundary condition. Uh, let's have a quick look at the polar coordinate system again. So this is x, this is y. We have a uh, point here. Um, this is the angle theta. This is r. We have um, the unit vector in the x direction looks like this. This is what we call i. Um, the unit vector in the r direction follows r. This is what we call r hat. And the unit vector in the theta direction is in perpendicular to r hat and in the direction of increasing theta. So this is what we call theta hat. So what is the free stream boundary condition? We have um, the velocity field in the free stream. In our um, non-dimensionalized system of equations, we've used the velocity of the free stream to non-dimensionalize the system. So then this one is just the unit vector in the x direction. So it has a, um, a magnitude of a velocity equal to 1. And then if we decompose i into components in the direction of r and in the direction of theta, this angle is theta, and we do the trigonometry using the fact that these are unit vectors, this will be um, cosine theta um, r hat minus sine theta theta hat. Okay. So that's our free stream velocity. But what we really need is the free stream uh, values of the stream function. So we use the fact that the partial derivative of the stream function with respect to theta is equal to r, uh, the velocity in the r hat direction. Uh, so this will be free stream values, right? Um, and here, r u r then is r cosine theta. Okay. Similarly, um, the partial derivative of the stream function with respect to r is equal to negative of the velocity component in the theta direction. So that's the negative of negative sine theta. So that's equal to sine theta. So these are the free stream values for the stream function. The derivative with respect to theta is r cosine theta. The derivative with respect to r is sine theta. A simple solution of these equations is that in the free stream, in the free stream, the stream function then is uh, r sine theta, right? So that satisfies both differential equations. Um, it also satisfies the um, boundary conditions on the midline so that we have psi equals 0 when theta is equal to 0, sine 0 is 0, and pi, sine pi is also 0. Okay, that's our boundary condition in the free stream for the stream function. The boundary condition for the vorticity is quite simple. There is no vorticity in the free stream, so that would be zero. Okay, what we need in our computation is these values on the grid. So um, we need it on the edges of the rectangle. The free stream occurs when um, psi psi is equal to its last grid point, which will be psi sub n. Remember, we have n grid points in the psi direction. So if we translate this now to the grid, we have the stream function psi at the last grid point in the psi direction, that's n, for all the grid points in the theta direction. It's supposed to be the uh, largest value of r. So the largest value of r in our psi variable 
will be e to the cosi n, and that will be for all angles. So that will be sine theta sub j. So that's the free stream condition. So this is the grid, the rectangle grid, the far right side of the rectangle. And similarly for the vorticity, omega n j then for all j will be equal to zero. These are our boundary conditions. So let me summarize. Uh, once you have the iteration equations, you then need the boundary conditions. Here we talk about the free stream boundary conditions. Uh, we want to have the free stream velocity equal to the unit vector in the x direction. In order for that to happen, we need to set the stream function equal to r sine theta in the free stream. When we translate that to our grid, that occurs when uh, the variable psi is at its maximum value, which is psi sub n, and then the free stream boundary conditions will be psi of n comma j equal e to the psi sub n sine theta sub j, and the vorticity omega sub n comma j is equal to zero. This is what you will implement in your simulation code. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.